All right, everybody, we are back with another Cabral concept. Can't wait to get into today's show, our Wellness and Weight Loss Wednesday, where we always put health first before transforming the body, whether it's weight gain, weight loss, whatever it might be. Uh, but I heard this wild statistic the other day, and I had to look it up. I said, is this possibly true? And it was a person loses 80% of their collagen by 60 years old. And it hit me. I'm like, that, that, I don't think that's right. I don't think that that is actually correct. So I went back into the research and I wanted to look this up for you and share it with you. Now, they weren't far off, which is shocking. Like it, it is, but it wasn't accurate. And so I just wanted to correct that here today, give you the accurate information, tell you why collagen begins to break down so quickly and what, of course, you can do about it. So the statistic they gave was not off. They said you lose about 1% to 2% of your collagen and ability to really produce collagen by 1% to 2% per year starting in your 20s. Okay, so if we just look at that, what they did was they took 20 years old, they added on 40 more years, and they multiplied by 2, and that gets 80%. Okay, so I see where they got it, and I don't, I don't know if they were doing it for marketing or what they were doing it, and, but I see where they got it from, but it's not correct. So here is the issue, is that an individual loses 1% to 2% of their collagen that year based on, yes, what they had in their 20s, typically somewhere around mid-20s. For women, it seems to be somewhere, when, uh, somewhere around 27 years old when bone production begins to then decline as well. So many women don't know this, but by 27 years old, that's basically the amount of bone that they're going to have for life. So it's really important that women weight train earlier in life, but also that they continue to weight train for life so they don't lose that bone mass. Really important. Okay. So uh, here is the statistic. It goes up to about 65% decline in collagen by about 65 years old. Now it could be about Half of that, 36 or so percent, not exactly half, uh, if it's a smaller amount of decline. So what I wanted to share with you is this, is that they actually weren't that far off with saying 80%. Now, it was exaggerated, no doubt about it, but I have the research studies for you as well. So I'm going to link those up for you if you're interested, but I want to share with you, of course, why this is happening and what you can do about it. So the research studies are, there's going to be four of them, and one is let's see, Journal of Investigative Dermatology. Another one talks about collagen content and density in uh, dermatoendocrinology. And these have been published now for over a decade. So like this is not new information. Another one talks about um, collagen cross-linking and uh, ages, which I've talked about before, advanced glycation end products. And the last one is actually on bone health and collagen. That was uh, in the Oster Osteoporosis uh, International. Okay, so I'll link those up for you. Uh, but also, I want to share with you some research on why this happens and research on what you can actually do about it. Okay, so the first one is this. I've got about six of these for you, five or six of these. So yes, collagen does decline every single year, just like bone, uh, if you're not doing something about it. Like, that's the thing. Like we, we can do something about it. But how do we speed it up? Like, what's worse? Okay, smoking. I've said it before. I'll say it again. The number one thing you can not do, or, you know, don't do, don't do this thing, right? And stop it if you are doing it, is breathing in smoke. Breathing in secondhand smoke, or firsthand smoke, if you're the smoker, and I don't honestly care what it is. For your health, I want you to stop. Don't care if it's like these healthy herbs that you're being told is healthy for you. Breathing smoke into your lungs is dangerous. Now, the chemicals from cigarettes are even more dangerous. The chemicals from vaping are even more dangerous than that. So yes, like there are less dangerous things, but smoke is a carcinogen. So it damages not only your lungs, but is it creates oxidative stress. That's the number one big takeaway from this show is that aging and aging of the exterior of our body, our skin, is from a lot of it's from oxidative stress. I, I teach in depth what causes aging and how to slow it at highperformancehealth.org. Uh, high if you're interested, uh, uh, totally up to you if you want to check it out, but we've got hundreds of people over there learning how to take back control of their own health, probably well over a thousand now. So amazing community over there. All right, smoking's the first one. Second is too much sun exposure. So I say the sun is good for you. So does uh, all of human history, right? But getting a sunburn is not healthy for you. 
And if you do get a lot of sun, it does not mean that it's going to cause skin cancer, right? It doesn't mean that. Sunburns could lead to that. Poor immunity may lead to that, much more likely, but it can accelerate skin aging. So I don't want to disagree with that, okay? I don't want to say that that's not true. Photoaging exists, meaning from the sun, right? Light, okay, UV radiation or ultraviolet radiation. All right. The third one is a diet that is high in oxidative stress or free radicals. What would that be? Basically, the standard American diet, processed food, high amounts of saturated fat with high amounts of processed carbs. Perfect example, french fries. Next great example, potato chips, right? You've got a processed potato, and then you mix it with an oil that is not good for you. Now, it's not just saturated fats. I don't want to say just saturated fats because we need some saturated fats. They're actually good for us, not at massive amounts, like in a McDonald's uh, hamburger, right? Like that's not uh, going to be healthy for us. But um, oxidate, oxidized omega-6s as well, like oxidized canola oil, oxidized soybean oil. Think about all, all the, the uh, oils that those foods are in. So basically, if it comes in a box or a bag or it's fast food, it is suspect. Could it be healthy? Possible. But nine out of 10 times, it won't be, and it will lead to a greater breakdown in collagen and, and aging, just in general. As you age, collagen breaks down. All right, environmental pollutants and toxins, the things that they didn't even say existed like 20 years ago. Well, lo and behold, they do, right? Uh, mercury, lead, aluminum, arsenic, cadmium, all the things that you can test for on the minerals and metals test, they really do exist, and they create more oxidative stress in the body. Glyphosate, uh, benzene, xylenes, all these things, plastics, they can all uh, create faster aging and breakdown of collagen. The last one I wanted to share with you is just chronic stress over time with alcohol consumption. One or two drinks is not going to do it, right? Over time creates what? More oxidative stress. The other though is sleep. If you've been chronically sleep deprived, you're going to have more oxidative stress in the body. Sleep is a time to squelch free radicals, to repair and rejuvenate the body. Seven to nine hours, 90 minutes of deep, and two hours of REM. That's really what we're shooting for, all right? So those are the, some of the main reasons, not the only ones, main reasons we're breaking down collagen as we age. It starts to show up as poor hair, poor skin, uh, you know, fine lines, wrinkles, uh, skin quality as well, tightness, tautness, and, uh, and nails. So hair, skin, and nails. Basically, that's how you look at it. Now, joints absolutely matter, right? Connective tissue, all those things do matter, right? So what do we need to do? Improve that de-stress protocol that I always talk about, right, in, in the rain barrel effect. It's diet, exercise, stress reduction, tox removal, rest, emotional balance, scientifically backed supplements, and a success mindset. The mindset is just to see the plan through. That matters. All right. So I'm going to talk about um, what is scientifically validated. Collagen really does work as a supplement. Lo and behold. Is it a good protein? No. Again, I'm always honest with you. Collagen's not a good protein. It's really not. It's not a complete protein. It's not a quality protein. It has protein, but I would never use it as your protein powder. So what can you do? You can add a scoop of collagen to your favorite protein powder or smoothie. And then you get the real effects of both what you want, which is more protein, which helps with you know hair, skin, nails, amino acids to rebuild and repair, especially if you're exercising. And then the collagen uh, helps with you know, more collagen production. So um, what else do you need? I have a whole podcast on collagen. I'd love to link that up for you. I will leave it at stephencabral.com slash 3113 because collagen has cofactors. So a lot of people are just adding collagen right now, but they're not getting in the zinc, vitamin C, and the other cofactors I talk about on the podcast. So what we recommend is using the daily nutritional support. It's a full protein powder, full activated multi, all your B-complex, vitamin C, zinc, all that good stuff, copper in there. And then add the advanced collagen support on top of that. It's lower histamine, which almost nobody is doing. It is three patented ingredients, which means there are clinical validated research studies on these three ingredients that say they're going to be absorbed, they are going to work, and they're going to actually raise your collagen levels. So they work. They really do. And we kept it um, lower histamine, lower animal product. So you, now you only have to add five grams of collagen, which means, um, so five grams of protein, lower histamine response because there's not as much, and you get better benefits because there are three clinically uh, patented extracts that get you better results. So now you take your protein up, you get collagen that works, you get the daily nutritional support, plant-based that works. And that to us, 
it's the best of all worlds, but it's also clinically verified. And that to me is, I think, really critical as a clinician that you're getting people the results they look for. So hopefully all of this was helpful. Just trying to also move the industry, not laying any blame. I, I can see how the person said you lose 80% of your collagen uh, within 40 years because they just the math was just off. They took it off of your 100% at 20 years old rather than a decline at 1% to 2% each year. And I know it's just subtleties, and it still matters. You're basically losing up to two-thirds uh, by that time. But um, I want to just make sure that we're always just trying to better our best. I'll link up the studies. Everything will be at stephencabral.com slash 3113. However, I can't link up the products that we use in our practice. For those, you can just go to stephencabral.com slash shop. It'll take you right over to Equal Life. Uh, that is our private practice. Uh, we ship worldwide. And you can just search daily nutritional support and you can search advanced collagen support. So hopefully this was helpful. As always, if it was, please do feel free to share it with anyone you believe it could serve. Take care, everybody. Have an amazing rest of the day. And I'll be back tomorrow with a brand new Cabral Concept. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.